It is 9.05 on p.m. on Thursday, March 16th. This is the start of our bi-weekly Pirate Party uh, member meeting. Um, my name is James O'Keefe, and who else is here? Ahoy, this is Joseph Onorowski from Lowell. Uh, this is Steve Revelak from Arlington. Good evening. Excellent. How are you two doing? All right. Good. I'm all the way up trying to spread the party word up in New Hampshire, you know, you know, doing my part. Excellent. So um, <clears throat> on our agenda at the moment are uh, reports under decisions and endorsements are a considering a pro cash plank. Um, uh, any United States Pirate Party issues we need to talk about under projects are local outreach, planning for 2023 local elections, uh, pirate news, and anything else to do as well as upcoming events. So um, are there any reports? Actually, first let me ask, is, is there anything anyone wants to add? Um, Nothing here. No, nothing of note here either. I don't really have anything report on reports at the moment. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Steve, do you have any reports? Uh, nothing to report. Okay, so moving on to decisions and endorsements. Uh, someone reached out to me asking what our, do, do we have a position on cash? Um, whether, um, not necessarily whether people should be given, say, wheelbarrows full of cash, but more whether um, the whether we should make a position, uh, whether we we had a position on cash and whether it should be used for transacting things. We've seen uh, businesses that will not accept cash and will only accept debit and credit cards, which of course come with fees. There's been talk of, you know, the Fed, the Treasury Department creating some form of digital cash. Uh, and I know we've talked about that on Pirate News, uh, but just wanted to throw that out there. Is there, you know, do we want to take a position on cash versus other means of exchange? I... Um, Oh, go ahead, Steve. I was going to say I have I have a personal position on cash, which is I like it. Um, <laughs> you know, and that means transacting things in cash, particularly a lot of smaller purchases. Um, you know, it doesn't involve the amount of data collection that one would have with a credit or debit card. Um, it, you know, doesn't impose transaction fees on the merchant, which you know, typical payment processors will take from three to five percent from a credit card transaction. And most importantly, when my pockets are empty, I know I should stop spending money. <laughs> Joe? Um, so I would like to reference a video uh, called, and, and really what the legal stance of these businesses are, um, it's called 8800 pennies and it's a little story about a company a tow truck company that refused to take cash because the client was trying to pay them in 8800 pennies which is 100 percent legal tender and they cannot be denied uh, i am 100 percent for keeping cash and as an entrepreneur uh, and on a personal note as an entrepreneur um if you're limiting how income is coming into your business that is a poor business decision just saying so you know you have to work in whatever medium your client is and that's just poor customer service um but i as always if somebody wants to insert uh mouth and open or open mouth and insert foot then i am a hundred percent behind you for your right to do so just saying that uh i it's legal tender so Plus all the things you said. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, my my I I I feel like paying for something in all pennies where the amount is you know, where where the amount of coins weighs more than I don't know a quarter of a pound seems kind of excessive. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if you bring it to a bank and you don't have a bank account there, they'll usually charge you some fee. And certainly like the coin services that the coin counting services that they have at, um, like supermarkets. Oh my, my good golly. <laughs> those, those, those rates are exorbitant. Um, but yeah, I fully agree on the non-traceability slash anonymity of cash and why that's important. Well, uh, there's, as far as like coins go and, you know, 88 bucks worth of pennies. Um, I mean, if you've got them in rolls of 50, sure, I'll take 88 bucks worth of pennies. And so will a bank. <laughs> it's just when you have, when you don't have them rolled, then you get into the, you know, collation fees and counting fees. Just count your pennies, man. <laughs> but Bernie, you keep your pennies in your own place as opposed to bringing them to a bank. But really, the secret behind that is you don't tell anybody that you got it. You know? So, um, that. but one other thing to say about it, too, is um, is the MMA. Eh, eh, totally butchering that word, and I apologize. But... Uh, it's definitely one of those things where it's a medium by which they want to track you and cash has proven difficult for them to track. So dealing in cash is probably the best. You don't want to be in a list somewhere because you bought weird colored underwear or whatever, you know, I don't want to be on anybody's list. Well, there was um, an article. I saw an article in the guardian and maybe this could be a good topic for pirate news. Um, you know, it involved Venmo. So Venmo is a little platform that lets people, you know, send money to each other. So instead of, you know, giving Jamie 20 bucks for gas, I could Venmo it to him in theory. And by default, Venmo, Venmo's default configuration is to make all your transactions public. So the story was, you know, basically a series of accounts of people who had looked at their friend's phone or their partner's phone and seen their Venmo transactions and said, uh, what? <laughs> Why are so, you buying sex toys and I have not seen it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there is some of that. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, or, or strangely, why did you buy a brazier and it was not given to me? Um, or, you know, why did you buy cannabis and did not share any <laughs> with your wonderful roommate <laughs> or spouse or whatever? whatever. Uh, all right, so it, it sounds like we should, we should put together a plank, um, I'll, I'll I'll share out a link, and at our next meeting, we can uh, discuss that can I, further. And, and can I make any Sorry, let me just let me just finish. I'll I'll, I'll put up a, a pirate pad link, and people can add text to it, and we can ask um, members to, you know, put their put what they'd like to see in it, and then we can kind of review it and go go forth from there. Yes, Joe. Uh, could we also just blast out a quick tweet? We support cash and uh, for uh, for security reasons. Sure. Any, any objection to putting out a pro cash tweet? Nope. All right. Uh, I'll put that out then. <laughs> or someone yeah, that... oh, with access can put it out. <laughs> You know, with um, because you think of all of the surveillance operations that the you know the federal government was running, say ten years ago, or the ones that we found out they were running like ten years ago with the, you know, the Snowden revelations. I was always astonished it was so focused on carriers, on mobile carriers and telcos, and not on banks because. 
I think you could probably tell a lot more about a person by who they exchange money with rather, you know, more so perhaps more so than who they communicate with. I mean, the transactions over a certain size have to be uh, itemized, if I recall correctly, and, and gathered. I don't know if they're always given to the government or if it's just, you know, you have to keep you have to keep a record. And then if we come to you with a warrant, you have to give us that information. Um, I'm not sure which it is. Um, I could see it being both ways, but, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. So I, I think some of that's been gathered, but what, what the threshold is, you know, does, does everyone see your CVS when you go to CVS to buy, a, you know, a pack of gum or something? Uh, or the corner store? All right. Uh, shall we then move on? Have we have we cashed this topic? I think so. Okay. All right. Uh, United States Pirate Party ish, issues. Is there anything that we need to decide upon, Joe? In the last set of meetings. I unfortunately missed the last meeting, so nothing to report. Okay. All right, moving on, uh, local outreach. Um, I've contacted some of the Somerville people. I still have more to notify that we have a poll asking for when's a good time to meet. Um, gotten some feedback about that, uh, but once I email it out to all the folks in Somerville or Somerville, Cambridge, Medford or something like that, um, <clears throat> you know, hopefully we'll be able to go and pick a date uh, certainly either in March or April and get together and start that process. Um, and then for Joe, I think you, you were going to use the May 13th conference up in Lowell as a chance to reach out to folks in Lowell and, or the greater Lowell area and encourage them to come. Yes. Excellent. And if you want, I can kind of walk you through emailing folks. Uh, any help would be appreciated. Okay. <clears throat> um, planning for local elections. Um, I would have to say uh, I've, I don't know, life is busy. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't pushed on that as much as I can. Uh, and city elections have not yet started, but uh, town elections are certainly chugging along. So I will hopefully get a chance to at least tackle some of those things on my to-do list uh, for next week, by you know, sometime this weekend. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm finding myself rather busy with uh, town elections these days. So, <laughs> how's that going? Pretty good. Um... May 1st or April 1st is our election day. So just a couple more weeks of uh, campaigning, sign holding and stop and door knocking. Excellent. Um, are there any candidates you would recommend for our listeners or our members uh, in Arlington? So I am supporting a fellow named Len Diggins for the Arlington Select Board. Um, you know, Len is interested in seeing the town grow and evolve. Uh, he's interested in doing, you know, working across municipal lines and regional, uh, doing regional planning. And, um, you know, he's he's been a big advocate for both uh, issues relating to improving transit and civic engagement. So, yes, if you're in Arlington, I encourage you to give one of your votes to Len Diggins. And how many select board members are being elected? So there are two. Uh, there are two seats uh, up for two two seats in this election, um, and three candidates running. So we do have a contested race. Nice. <clears throat> Welcome, Misty. Um, great. Okay, so, uh, hi. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> so um, the pirate new the previous pirate news should be up. I think so. I think it's up. Uh, where we talked about um, uh, SVB ChatGPT WTF. I think was the title that we did. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, check that out. The cute kitty picture. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and there is a link to it because it is a public domain photo. So if you want a public domain photo of a, of a cat hissing, it is available for you to get uh, for free. Um, additionally, I, I think at the link you can get like a 4K version or something like that. I think the 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 one that I was able to download without actually creating an account was like 1080 by 1920, so basically HD uh, quality. But you know, if you want the higher res version, they are there, and that is one of many uh, images that are there. So we certainly encourage people to. Uh, you know, Creative Commons, their images, um, and and other stuff like like that, uh, public domain them, whatever. Uh, are there any topics we could we should discuss this Sunday? One of the things that I had heard was that there used to be a site uh, that had free, oh, well, I'm going to get this wrong. It was free guitar, what's the term? Uh, transcriptions. Well, that transcription is not the word, but it was. Tabulature? Uh, no. Like, not, not okay, so not how to play guitar stuff. No, it's like I keep. I'm thinking riffs, but it wasn't riffs. <clears throat> uh, let me see. I know I went and just to be like tweeted out about it. Um, uh, ah, here we go. Yes, so there was a place called guitartabs.com yeah tablature oh okay all right thank you uh and it was the source of free open source music tabs and then a a uh private equity company bought them and now everything's paywalled <laughs> yeah so for 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 folks who uh who aren't who don't haven't used this stuff tabulature is it's kind of like music notation, but with the instead of uh, showing notes, it basically shows you where to put your fingers on the fretboard. Um, you know, so it's fingerings, but you know, it still, you know, it's basically a, a written form of instruction on how to play a piece of music. Um, you know, I found them very helpful in my more formative years when I was learning how to play guitar. <laughs> so. Um... I don't know. If we go back to 2018, January 14th at the Wayback Machine uh, at web.archive.org. Um, oh, interesting. In 2018, it was by this domain. That's not a good sign. Go back to 2016. I don't know. I mean, I, there have been some, some suggestion that um, if it's all archived at uh, the Wayback Machine, then, um, you know, that, that stuff could be liberated and, and placed somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> so, anyways, that's something that's a topic we could discuss on Sunday's Pirate News at 7.30. Uh, any other, other suggestions? I mean, there's, there's, it, SVB got bailed out uh, along with another bank, um, and the depositors were made whole. Um, I, th well, uh, if we want to do something Massachusetts related, uh, we can talk about um, the MBTA communities requirement, 
there so this is a requirement that cities and towns um served by the mbta allow multifamily a certain amount of multifamily housing to be built by right you know it's basically encouraging transit oriented development i mean granted the team needs help but you know we can work on both things at once because we need housing too uh, one of the things that there are a number of communities that decided that, you know, we are just not going to comply with this. And the attorney general sort of released a statement recently uh, saying that, you know, compliant, there is no provision in the law for opting out. And, you know, communities that do, that flout the law, um, the attorney general will be looking closely at your fair housing policies. <laughs> so, uh you know, go go Andrea Campbell. <laughs> Would there be any um but uh, I, I think that's a great topic to discuss. Um I'm curious if there are any um is there any teeth to it? I assume there is some some teeth to it, right? Well, you know, she's got um there are a bunch of you know, there's federal fair housing law. Uh, so the, the teeth that are in the legislature itself are losing eligibility for a cert, for a couple of types of, um, infrastructure grants. Um, you know, Mass Works probably being the most prominent one. Um, you know, state agencies, I'm not sure which of them oversees, um, you know, local housing authorities, but communities that have not been, you know, sticking with the schedule of submissions have found their uh, state aid to the local housing authorities cut. And the attorney general, uh, if you know her office would like to enforce federal fair housing laws or Mass Massachusetts anti-discrimination laws, you know, against communities that use, say, zoning as a way to uh, keep lower income people out of the community, they have the, you know, they, they can do that. <laughs> so I, I think there are teeth. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Um, okay. Uh, what do you think of the idea of putting up a pirate pad that people can suggest topics or articles to, to look at and we can review it Sunday? Um, I think that's cool. Okay. We'll go and put that up. Maybe even put a link in the description here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, I uh, did. I, I reached out to the folks at the Trans Resistance March about um, doing a privacy and security training for them. Uh, it's something they're interested in, but they'll have to think more about that. They, I guess, they've done stuff like that in the past. Um, uh, I have not yet heard back when that March will be. Um, and then Boston Pride, I think, has, I think, no, I think they have a general area. I don't know that they've picked a date. And then um, the other event we talked about was like a red umbrella summer event or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, and of course, our yeah, next one. Begin. Yeah, sorry, go on, Joe. With a red umbrella. Uh, for the red umbrella, and I was just thinking towards the end of August, you know, try and not have it. There's a lot of events going on during that time, though, because it's still warm. Yeah. Um, and then our, as we mentioned, um, our next conference will be in Lowell um, on May 13th, starting at noon, and it'll be a cookout. Uh, and that will be up at our website soon um, with details and all of that. Um, so is there anything else to, so uh, Misty, I, I know you came on. I don't, um, I know you're kind of balancing a couple of things. So it, I wondered if you got a chance to get to the U.S. Pirate Party meeting and if there's any upcoming issues we should uh, give you and Joe guidance on? Um, the most recent Pirate Party uh, meeting mostly covered um, oh, the, the Kentucky, losing Kentucky. Okay. 
Um, was the decision made on that, or um, it was? There was a lot of talk on what we could do to prevent it in the future, and it looks like um, there's going to be uh, a, like a, not a committee, but uh, some new form of oversight. Um, there's a text document I can link later. Um, I'm going to work. I just don't have it handy. Yeah, that would that would be great if you could share that out on the activists' email list so people can so folks can see that. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, uh, and with that, um, I think that's pretty much it. Joe, do you have an update on the PPI application? No, I'm sorry. That fell by the wayside. I'll try and work on it tonight. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want, if you have any questions, uh, you know, we can get together over, you know, chat or something and, uh, or over mumble uh, <laughs> and, and get, um, you know, and start kind of going through the form and filling it out, stuff like that. So happy to help. Uh, and with that, I don't think we've, we've reached the end of our agenda. So, um, <clears throat> uh, Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> any opposed mm -hmm. to adjourning? No opposition. Excellent. There being none, we have adjourned. It is now set 9.32 p.m. Uh, Thursday, March 16th. Thank you very much uh, for for um, Misty, Steve, and Joe for attending. Uh, for folks watching this, if you'd like to attend, we have this every two weeks, except, you know, when unfortunately things go up, get in the way, <laughs> and, you know, people get sick and, and stuff like that. Um, but we try to keep it to that. And then, um, so the next one will be in two weeks time uh, on the 30th of March. I think I got that one right. Uh, my math should be should be fine. So uh, yeah, and check us out at Pirate News uh, this upcoming Sunday or past, past uh, live streams. All right, folks, thank you very much. I'm going to stop the recording now.